Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So, we once did Bloodlines. Oh, okay, no. No, yeah. you gotta sit down! <laughs> we just started, you don't even know what this is. Yeah. Hang on. We hang once on. did it's Bloodlines. Bloodlines related. It's not, it's not, it's not, I promise. It's not even close to Bloodlines. In terms of story... You just mentioned Bloodlines for no reason. I, I know. I mean, it's, I'm just saying we did Bloodlines, okay? Right. Yes, we did it. I'm acclimating it was, us. It was an event. It was a lot of different books. That's right. It was a lot of books, and it all encompassed a bunch of annuals, and for some reason, that was just in DC's craw, where they were like, okay, so, like, let's take an event that fundamentally changes, or at the very least, tries to maintain our relevancy in the comic book world. And we'll create new characters. We'll create new characters, and... Uh, we'll we'll do it by hijacking every book that we publish as annuals and put out two relevant books that actually have the story in it. Okay, if you if you say we're doing Bloodlines two, I am. Leaving. There is no Bloodlines two. <laughs> uh, there are multiple Bloodlines, but like we're not going to get to Bloodlines. Plus, mm. this is the last time we're going to talk about Bloodlines. <laughs> we're going to talk about Armageddon two thousand one, which is another one. <laughs> this is what DC did in nineteen ninety one. It was before Bloodlines. I was going to oh. say this looks like pre Bloodlines. It is pre Bloodlines, but not by much. Yeah, you can tell because mm. of the. The ads on the back. Yes, great Three Musketeers ads, WCW. <laughs> WCW, oh man. Yeah. It's 1991. No one's buying DC Comics. We don't know. We're fucked yet. But we have a pretty good idea. <laughs> and it's because of business practices like this that DC will have a hard time maintaining its relevancy during that decade known as the 90s. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Armageddon 2001, 1991. Okay, so here it is. It's 15 parts. This is the introduction Sweet. of Wave Rider. There's actually a couple of characters whose first appearances are in 2001. Uh, a villain named Monarch. The hero named Wave Rider. Hmm. I can't hear Monarch without thinking the Monarch. <laughs> <laughs> Number 27! Part of the reason why I wanted to do it now is because we are right now, as of the taping of this... Oh my god! It's 30 years. Oh, yeah. the 30 year anniversary of, of this Armageddon event 2001. nobody talks And about. 20 years after the title says it is. That's right! <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. You need uh, these two issues to read the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you take all of this and just, and just put, it, put over it over there. There, there are actually a few okay issues in there that are really important that we will talk about. But uh, this is the meat and potatoes of Armageddon 2001. Right. But hey DC, this is an omnibus. Put all of these together, and people will read it because they'll go, Oh yeah, I think I remember something about Armageddon 2001. Mm. Or they're an insane completist and they need it because it's just in the library. If you have an omnibus of War of the Gods, you should have an omnibus of this <laughs> and Bloodlines. <clears throat> By the way, War of the Gods, massive, multi-part DC Comics event about Wonder Woman happening at the exact same time as Armageddon 2001. Which is why there are no Wonder Woman tie-ins to Armageddon 2001. Right. Uh, the, it, it's inexcusable because both of those events are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and a disservice to the characters that they claim to be about. <laughs> okay. Just horrible. So what's happening at DC <sighs> during 1991? Uh, yeah. Batman hasn't yet gotten his back broken. Uh, we've introduced uh, a new Robin to the proceedings. Tim Drake Tim has Drake. come okay. and he has made a huge splash. Uh, none of these books, these 15 issues, sold better than the newly minted Robin solo series that had launched, which is not connected to this event. Yeah. Wow. Tim Drake Robin outsells the entire major publishing line. The premise of Armageddon 2001 is that the present is 1991. Yes. As, at the time of the printing of these books. Right. The uh, character that we follow... Wave Rider. ...exists in the year 2030. Oh, and he knows of an Armageddon that occurred in 2001. Yes, okay. that's right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But Rider, if there was an Armageddon in 2001, how is there a future? Well, well the Armageddon... Well, Armageddon yeah, 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 means the end. Well, we'll, we'll talk about there's that. There's a few because people the that Armageddon make it or whatever. is not of humanity. Oh. The Armageddon is of the heroes. The idea is that in 2001... Okay. All of the DC heroes are killed. All of them? All of Well, all the good ones. All uh, the relevant ones. But no, all of them. <laughs> because at the end of this event, we get close to the Armageddon, and we see characters that definitely don't need to be slaughtered for us to forget about them. <laughs> right. So everyone dies. Okay. But humanity moves on. So it's not that, like, 
everyone's annihilated. Right. But, it just uh, it becomes like the world actually is, where there are, where no, there are superheroes. no superheroes, <laughs> and it sucks. Right. So, yeah, it's Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, they read Watchmen, like because it's referenced in here. Mm. Uh, there's an opening of Armageddon 2001 where it talks about like thoughts and eternities, and I have time, and time is me, and I'm suddenly here, and then I'm at this time, and I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you read Watchmen, too. Yeah. That's cool, good for you. <laughs> Wave Rider ain't Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> Let me tell you. All right. Uh, he could be. Yeah, they're like, he could We're be trying. in canon, Dr. Manhattan. I'm like, no, Dr. Manhattan is Captain Adam. Yes. I mean, if you're looking at power-wise, yes. Yeah, well, and templates for. Yeah, what he was based on. But Captain Adam's important for Armageddon 2001. So okay. uh, the premise of Armageddon 2001, the world sucks. It is ruled by a totalitarian government that is dictated by a evil figure named Monarch. And people are more or less just conditioned to live their mundane lives. The Does way Monarch you have powers? Yes, he does have powers. He's also okay. he's super powerful, and he can do nebulous things that <sighs> show he has powers, energy. Oh, he has strength. Uh, <laughs> Monarch has many powers. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so people don't challenge. He's him. like points at people, and there's a flash, and then they're hurt. He, he like blasts that kind of or shit. Trees. Yeah, there's blasts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay. The future of 2030 is dictated because the heroes die in 2001 right. because they were betrayed by one of their own. Oh, okay. Someone, okay. someone of equal footing, someone who is known, who is established, who is a hero. And who doesn't have a title in this series, <laughs> Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing if Wonder Woman was Monarch. Instead, it is a character that you can guess if you follow the books and, and the breadcrumbs until you can't. As a result, in 2001, the heroes all die. They're all and dead. Monarch ascends, and the world is a totalitarian government. Okay. So that sucks. Right. So and, it's and not Dark Side that kills them, or no, is it? No, it's, it's okay. more like this is Ryder's just like... depicting this. We got to see something, and we right. don't want it to show words. Okay. So the heroes fight Dark Side, and then a shadowy figure among their ranks goes in and kills all the heroes. You know, it's oh. just like a metaphorical fight. It's metaphorical. Right. Oh, okay. So right. like. I'm seeing someone's hand go through someone's chest that didn't That doesn't mean happen. they can do that. Right, that doesn't mean it was Martian Manhunter or Flash. No, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's sort of like every issue is a clue. Yeah, except it isn't. Because you could read all of these books, except for two of them, out of sequence. It doesn't matter. Oh. Well. So Matthew Ryder is this schlubby, brilliant scientist <laughs> who works for the science department of Monarch's government. Oh, and also, like, lives in Metropolis or whatever. Right. In 2030 now. In 2030. Are. Okay. Yeah, that's, like, that's Matthew Ryder's present. Okay. And we're going to see some of that. We're going to see some of that. How shitty it is. <sighs> okay. Because the peacemakers are making life miserable for everybody. They the peacemakers are, are the, the secret, secret police, police of uh, Monarch. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Monarchs, yeah. they're watching you. There's Monarch statues everywhere. Okay. And the rumor has it Monarch has eyes everywhere. And that, like, maybe Monarch is actually... Not even on Earth. He's in like an orbiting satellite and he's using all those statues to watch people. As cameras. Spoilers, he is. And yes. <laughs> and spoilers like That's if you do something bad, like the statue use. will come down and get you. It doesn't, but like the peacekeepers. Why not? not? Oh because my God, statues. that'd be perfect. It's just, a sta it's just to hide it the camera. It shouldn't be a statue. It should be a robot that is pretending to be a statue. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past these people. Little did they know at that time that like in reality, you could just put cameras everywhere visible and people, and would, just, people or, would just be fine. Or, or put cameras in people's pockets and they'll film themselves willingly. As long as there's like a fun dance they can do in front of it. <laughs> so Matthew Ryder is dissatisfied with the status quo. Yeah. He doesn't like He's like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. And like, there's no good Shouldn't reason. Be like he this. remembers the way it used to be. Mm. And like a lot of people do because he's only like in his 30s. Right. He's He was a kid. He but, was a kid. Uh, but he remembers. He's in his things. 30s. He, he was like, what? Six. Five? <laughs> six. Yes. Okay. Six when the world fell. Yeah, I remember that real well. <laughs> I'm sure you're in your Well, mental... you remember the trauma that you went Jeez. through because Matthew Ryder remembers there being a massive superhero fight mm. and him getting caught in the debris as a child. Oh. And he remembers that a hero saved him. And we see this fun depiction of like... And he... they say that hero <laughs> saved him. Oh my him. God, no! <laughs> We see these different heroes like all reaching to save him because he doesn't remember which oh, hero which one it was. was. Yeah, yeah. So we just see it's any hero. Yeah, you know? And someone. it could have been anybody. And that's uh, kind of fun, but they do, he doesn't As remember. As it turns out, it was just a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> the true heroes. Right. But he does remember that the hero does say something to him that inspires him. So sometimes it seems that it, nothing could help you, which is why someone should be there to try. It's not exactly with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, yeah. 
I mean, that's a little darker. Yeah, well, that, he lives in a dark world. But uh, he remembers the way it used to be. And so what he does in his spare time, and this guy's a family man. He's got two kids and a wife and a house. Well, an apartment. And he, in his spare time, will visit an older man who runs a kind of like secondhand shop. Okay. And this old man has discs that have pictures and videos from the from the before times. Right. And it's got those floppy just 1984. Discs. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, it's like yeah, it's that. It's, it's that. It's all the it's all the dystopian Orwellian futures you can imagine. It's yeah. just it's, it's just a it's just a Marge's makeup that. shotgun of dystopian <laughs> fiction. <laughs> okay. But uh, you know, he he remembers these times and he wants to like look back on them and and, and familiarize himself more because he's like, you know, I was a kid when they were alive. They all died. You know, he's filling in the gaps. Right. I'm surprised and the monarch allows... Oh, he doesn't. To, oh, this is, this this black is underground. Market shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't look very... Uh, oh, no. Well, it's, but... it's just in the basement of this guy's house. Oh, okay. But, uh, well, his, his shop, I should say. But right. uh, he talks about how there are different people who want different... Who have different vices. You know, some people want to look up old politicians. Some people want to look up sports heroes. But heroes across the board are outlawed. Heroism is a dirty word. Oh. I love Matthew Ryder's inner monologue when he's having dinner with his family. Family time. Four steadily diverging lives, briefly meeting over dinner. Exchanging plans and goals. The conversation of strangers. Oh. But uh, his daughter is a peacekeeper. And he, like, hates that. Ah. She's a collaborator. Yeah. Oh my God, this is equilibrium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like... Oh, what's funny is he's the odd man out in this society. Like right. everyone's like, get with the program. He's like, yeah. oh god. Yeah, but don't like, you wish I it could believe, be better? I can't yeah. believe I raised these children to right. just go along with 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 the, with the status quo that yeah. everyone literally is going along with. God, right. I can't wait until I get time travel power so I can escape this boring family. Yeah. While Matt Ryder is like at the subway station waiting for his train, uh, the peacekeepers like pour in and just roll in and take shit. <laughs> No, they, <laughs> the peacekeepers roll in and yeah. they are chasing a suspect. Okay. And there is a small girl who is crying for her mother mm. and she is going to be caught in the crossfire. Right. And the peacekeepers have already issued a mandate which is get down on the ground and avoid contact with the peacekeepers who are trying to apprehend the suspect. Right. And Matt is like, this child is going to be caught in the crossfire. Right. She's too scared to like, get down. She's too scared to get down or move yeah. and nobody cares or they're like, Listen to the peacekeepers. They already gave yeah. us a direct order. Yeah, I can't help her because I have to be on the ground right, right but now. But don't be a hero. <laughs> right. How dare you? So Ryder goes against the norms and memes of his culture and uh -huh. just rides headlong into danger, grabs her and rescues her from Crossfire, right. which does pick up the old man suspect that they was trying to board a train. Right. They shoot him like three times. They shoot him three times. And they shoot everything else around him. Yes. yes. And they discover one of the peacekeepers is... Matt Ryder's daughter, Karen. Oh. So she dogmatically followed the rule of law. And was trying to kill her dad. No, no, no. no, no, no. She was no, trying but, to kill that little girl. Yes, but he was under arrest for not following the rules. Well, right. He is. So for... She's not allowed to play favorites. No. Then she would be suspect. That's right. right. That's right. right. So he is arrested for saving that girl. That's right. Okay. And he's not really arrested. He's, he's apprehended uh. because Karen's a peacekeeper <laughs> and Matt Ryder does important work for the monarch. Like, he's a scientist for the monarch. Yeah. They pull some strings and it becomes a slap on the wrist. But most people don't get slaps on the wrist, so yeah. like, it's still mm. horrible. Right. But right. he's not in jail. Okay. Or executed. Yes, or executed. In jail. So, he uh, he realizes, like, this is this is a disaster. Right. Like, this whole thing. My life sucks. This is this horrible. This is bullshit. Yeah. The old man who they shot was the store owner that uh, sold him those discs. Yeah. So... You know, he's like, but the man was just, he was just a history man. Like, he just had, like, old stuff. He, all he wanted to do was, was give people knowledge. Like, uh, yeah, why do you run that? The most dangerous thing. Yeah, why do you run? They yeah. literally, that's the line in the book. Yeah. yeah. Also, knowledge is drugs. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> Ryder realizes, <laughs> Ryder realizes that, uh, you know, this future sucks and to hell with all of it. Yeah. Incidentally, clandestinely might say, uh, they've gone, they, they, they've happened upon a breakthrough in his department, which is that the monarch is desperately trying to crack time travel. <laughs> mm. And they have run into a kind of a snag with the time travel, and they're looking for volunteers to go back in time and test the 
device. The right. stag being that they don't know if it might like turn you inside out or whatever. Well, they don't know. Well, <laughs> the thing is, they keep sending people through the machine and they never come back. They never come back. Now, uh, you're not supposed to come back. You're supposed to like etch something into right. a park bench or something. Right, somewhere. right. I don't know what the... what the Is the, the machine designed so they can come back or is it a, a one-way trip? It, it's kind of weird. Like, it doesn't really like, establish... How do they think that the people are going to get back <laughs> according no to the idea. plan? It's hilarious, actually, because once we get into how this applies to Matthew Ryder's life, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> when was, wh okay. how would you know anything? But, As it turns out, they weren't sending people back in time. You were only sending people forward through time. Right, and then meet on the other side. No one ever said like, I right, was like, here. You gotta switch to forwards, not backwards, man. <laughs> oh. Okay, you're up. <laughs> why is that a switch? <laughs> My thing is like, why, why would anyone come back? Yeah, this place right. sucks. They'd be like, oh my god, these guys, we send them back to like the 1950s and they just gotta like stay there. And it's like, yeah, of course they do. Why would they ever come back? This place sucks. So Ryder's like, I've got my plan. I'm gonna go back in time and I'm gonna kill Monarch. Okay. That's my plan. So I'm sure. going to ingratiate myself with Monarch and get on the list to go back in time. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. But he's one of the scientists. He is, yes. But uh, he's also like a rabble rouser. He's got the record. Right, so like, yeah, maybe we'll get rid of this guy. Yeah. Well, no, no. They're like, no, you, we can't trust you to go oh. back. So he's like, wait a minute. So he reasons he has a, he has a brilliant airtight scheme. Okay. He's going to be more of a rabble rouser. So he goes to the monarch statue, he like throws booze at it. And he's like, they say that you're following, watching everybody. Well, fuck you and everything else that this place stands for. It all sucks. And monarch shows up. Ah. Uh, he's like, you want to talk to me? You he's like, say to me? Yeah. So monarch <laughs> and Matthew Ryder meet and he's listening. And he's basically like, look, I think I've got the problem with why people don't come back from mm. the past. Their their will is not strong enough to return. And so they just like come what? apart in the time stream. Oh, so the time stream like tears them apart because they're not mentally prepared for it. Yeah. Is he basing this on like science? Sure. Or no. he just came up with it? He just came up with it off the top of his head. But it's also not like an attempted ruse because he does know that no one's come back from right. it. And people are torn apart by the time. And then he is a scientist and that is So I guess theory. he reasons that, yeah, yeah, it's that you're like willful. Monarch's like, mm, that's very interesting. Uh, you know what? You've convinced me. Okay. So they put it through the process. You've convinced me? <sighs> to hell with that. I'm just going to throw you in jail. Yeah. Well, no. What's great is they're like, okay, so you do have the will to go through. And your, your logic is sound because they have this conversation under the subterfuge of being like in Monarch's like, I don't know, grotto? Uh -huh. But then it turns out it's all holograms and all the scientists are there like checking his math. Oh, his like, math? Yeah, his the math, math about will? Yeah. And they're like, well, it's pretty solid theory. I say we go for it. Uh, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, in the year 2022, 20, yeah. uh, the math is going to start including things like will. Yeah, right. things Intent you can't quantify. Right. And, uh, and heart. Yeah, your love. I see. Yeah, yeah we measured his, his will. His, 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 it's off the charts. <laughs> it's over 9,000. <laughs> It's higher than Master Yoda's. <laughs> so Monarch is like, okay, you may have a constitution strong enough to survive the time stream, but... Will you come back? Will you come back? And you have a family and a wife and children, mm. and I believe that you don't want to see them unmade by mucking around in the past, so you will return to the future with my information that I need. And he's like, the joke's on you. you! I hate my family! <laughs> He says that? No, he says that in his head. Oh, in his head he says that. Yeah. yeah. Sir, That's sir, awesome. we were reading his thoughts. Uh, uh, apparently he apparently hates his family. He hates yeah. family. And Monarch's like, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh my God, okay, get out, out of here. You're out of the project, but we are putting you in therapy. Because <laughs> that is just sick. <laughs> so they do it. And he turns into Wave Rider. And he turns into Wave Rider. Yeah. Yeah, no. He, is okay, that what Monarch I... also like shot powers at him. Monarch is battling Matthew Ryder in a like kaiju-esque battle that is representative of the metaphysical process of tempering his body so that it will withstand time travel. Oh, okay, so that's not oh. actually happening. Happening. Okay. Well, that would have made more sense as to like why he turned into Wave Rider and no one else did. Oh, yeah, no, it's, well, it's because he has the, the will. will thing. Yeah. 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 So the only thing that was ever going to happen was you would either become Wave Rider or, or just not. disappear if you're too weak to become or, Wave Rider. Or just going through time like, normally wouldn't work. Or there's like four or five Wave Riders like rolling oh, around. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they just, never really get into. They just never came back. Yeah, they were like, like, fuck that, I'm Wave Rider now. Yeah, the I story's not design. about them, but yeah. they do exist. They do exist and they're out there and yeah. they're doing their own thing. But I'm like, Wave Rider. No, you're Wave Rider number four. Yeah, but my oh. name is actually Matthew Ryder. <laughs> 
Yeah, they're Wave something else. Yeah, they're Wave Stevenson or uh, <laughs> Wave <laughs> Martinez. So he goes back to 1991 and he finds out that Wave Rider has many powers. And uh, in addition to like being able to access and move through time, he can also make himself invisible or he can make himself look like other people. And oh. so he does. And uh, you know, he wanders around as a cop, he gets attacked immediately by a tweaker, and then he freezes time and touches them. And he realizes that like when he touches people, he freezes time and like the time around them and accesses the timelines that that person that he's touching will have. So he gets to like Wait, see through the like eyes. Like multiple timelines? Yeah. He like gets, where things could branch off? He he sees the most probable timeline that they're going to live through or alternate timelines. What's funny is how it, Wave Rider's involvement changes that theory. But let's just say that he sees multiple timelines for people, but he checks like the most probable one. Because what he's doing is... His, the power that he develops as this original character is originally developed just so he can check to see which hero becomes Monarch. Okay. And follows right. the like inevitable timeline that they follow and see if it ends up with them. So he Monarch sees costume. time by touching them from their perspective. Yes. Like through their eyes, like everything that they go through. Yes. Um, or, or probably will go through or exactly. could go through. Exactly. Okay. So the, that's just a mechanic for us to have all these books happening right around the same time. That's right. And it, each one is like separate and self-contained because yep. it's just the perspective that he's seeing when he touches that one person. Yes. Also why it's not like you have to read them in sequence yeah. because they're right. pretty much all happening at the same time. More or less all of them are, yes. And they may or may not even connect to each other because they they're do like not. alternate versions of reality. There are three different Superman titles. There are three different timelines. Right. So now That's what you hilarious. get is 13 What If comics. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, but like not what if this person became the monarch, right? Nope. No, it's no, no. It's just if, like what if... What if they did something... Because well, remember, he's checking to see their timelines in the year 2001 because he knows that that's the year that monarch rises. Right. So each one of these is set in 2001. Yes. And it's just it's just 13 different versions of what could happen. Yes. Hey, what's going to happen to your superhero in 10 years? Let's find out. Yeah. Some of them know what they're going to do with some of these characters or what's on the horizon. Yeah. But, oh, really? But mostly it's Superman. And what they don't know is that he's going to die. <laughs> but they do know that they're going to do the wedding and panic in the sky. In fact, they're in, in, I think, Superman, we see, like, the last panel of panic in the sky, which doesn't even oh. happen for another, like, year or so. Okay. But they're seeing that, and yet none of them, it's, hey, you don't have a future. No, he's not like, oh. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's not good. So I mean, you're not monarch, so I don't care. <laughs> But so, like, you know, the world's going to mourn you. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be sad. So when he's when he's um, going through these what ifs. Yes. <laughs> these scenarios. I see him standing there. Do they see him? No, or they don't. Or he's like the watcher he's when he's the doing He's the watcher this. when he's doing it. He's yeah. walking around like. Well, he's invisible. He can make himself invisible. Okay. So he'll All just right. like walk in and watch them. Okay, and he's just looking to see, like, if you this become person monarch? becomes monarch or maybe if you see who does become monarch. It's mostly the first part. Okay. I mean, if I were him, I'd save time by doing that too. Right. Like, okay, well, this person was alive and aware of things, so maybe he would know, even right. if he doesn't himself literally become yeah, the monarch. if you did that and monarch was inevitable, then what you should do is just follow Superman's timeline to 2001 when monarch takes off his mask and says, I've killed you. <laughs> like... Right. And then he doesn't have to touch everybody, but instead he touches everyone who's in this book. Right. Well, I, I have to make okay. sure. Yeah. And does he touch Superman three times or yes. he touches him once in the Three different times. <laughs> okay. He's I want to like, be sure. Or he's like, you're really cool. Well, here's the thing. He's not like a fanboy, although he kind of is because he's like a hero worshiper. But I like, don't think you understand. I have all of these archives of superheroes yes. and things that I used to watch. Yeah. But he's not like oh. Aeobar Thawne where he's like, I'll jerk you off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when Wave Rider does it, like when he interferes, yeah. yeah, that all but certifies that that future will never happen. Yeah, because he changes it. Because he right? changes it by being involved. Yeah. But he wait, he interferes by like touching, by them. like grabbing them. Well, later on, he That's will also it. interact with some of these characters, and like sometimes he doesn't have time to just freeze time and touch them. Sometimes he'll talk to them and interact. But that's just with them. it. That's you have weird. more time if you just freeze time. Yeah. Yeah. But in some of these issues, but he can't just, not interfere. He'll interfere or he'll talk to them and be like, "Here's what happened." So this is he just DC's behaves differently in each book. Yeah. This reason. is DC's Watcher. Yeah. 
Yeah, except Wave I can't, Rider. I can't interfere. I can't, I can't interfere. interfere. Except when I'm gonna Dude, interfere. Of there's course. There's an issue when Superman dies, where Wave Wave Rider like, because Wave Rider like eventually he can't like join the Justice League, so he goes away. Like he goes like in between time and hangs out with like Rip Hunter and stuff, and he's like guarding time or watching it and stuff. And he finds out Superman dies, and he goes back, and he's like, I could stop this. And he, like, doesn't. And instead just watches Superman get the shit kicked out of him and dies. And it's like, fuck you! What is your philosophy? I don't understand. I hate my family. <laughs> like, that's the only thing I know for certain about Wave Rider, is that, right. like, he's, he's, a, he's a douche. And he wants Maybe. to find the monarch. Right. That's, his, that's, the, that's really the well, only thing. I stop the monarch and here. unmake my family. So every single issue of Armageddon 2001 is just a what-if comic book that shows you, like, what would happen maybe to these heroes in the year 2001. In Superman, the whole damn thing is an inverse of Dark Knight Returns, where Superman goes rogue and like, basically just tries to impose martial law on the world. Hmm. And so the president calls Batman to kill Superman. And it's like I've heard that you are you could defeat Superman somehow in a fight. Because recently- Because you're like, super prepared. Since 86 and Christ and Invented Earths, you know, the timeline's reset, and Superman and Batman aren't really friends. Right. Uh, earlier in this chronology, Superman gives Batman a kryptonite ring in case he's ever, like, taken over. Ah, uh, yes. So Batman knows he's got the kryptonite ring. So in this story, Batman puts on Dark Knight Returns armor. Yes. And wields the kryptonite ring and fights Superman. And he's like, dude, like, people, your collateral damage is happening. Like, people are dying while you're on, like, guard. Yeah. Like, Martian Manhunter dies. Because uh, he's like set on fire, but he doesn't die because he's on fire. The fire could have easily been extinguished. He's so afraid he dies. And Superman's great because he goes, oh, so I didn't kill him. And they're like, uh, technically? <laughs> uh, like, okay, well then my hands are clean. Oh my all God. I'm saying is, I shot him, but I didn't kill him. The, it was the bullet. The bullet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is just a recreation yep. of the panel, but less exciting. Yeah. Okay, weird. Yeah. And then uh, Batman kills Superman in that story. Oh, great. Yeah, because yeah. he's got kryptonite, so yeah. it's, it's super easy. Literally, Superman's just like, oh, please don't kill me. And Batman's like, don't talk. Don't talk to me. This is a planeteer ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd point that out. I mean, don't kill me. Shh, shh, shh. That's, it's basically that. And then he goes, yeah. okay, well then just take care of my wife and my mom. No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no. What's that? Abandon your wife and fuck your mom, okay? Got it. Shh. No, die. I okay. Mean, I do those things, but he thought I did those things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, the end of these stories. <laughs> <laughs> the end of these stories is just Wave Rider being like, okay, it wasn't him. Yeah. Move it on. Yeah. That's every single issue. So, weirdly reminiscent of Tempest Fuganai. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the futility of it all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, whenever if, you if I got to the end of the story in one book, how would I make all more all this money? Yeah, exactly. Right. No, I mean, like DC can't have a Watcher. That's what it is. It's just yeah. each, each, every decade they try and make up a new Watcher. So uh, there's only a couple of these that matter because sure. uh, there are a couple of breadcrumbs that are dropped throughout. You know, okay. because like time still moves forward as these books progress. Okay. Uh, you know, because it always takes place in 1991 where Wave Rider goes, okay, touch. Let's see 2001. Right. No, okay. But I don't understand, because they're all living in the same reality, so yeah. shouldn't 2001 be the same for all of them? <laughs> yes. So why is it not? And if it's not, <laughs> then what's the point of him even doing this? Oh, because it's like, well, that, none of those might be the reality that actually happens. That's what happens. he discovers at the end of the book. But at, the end of, uh, at, the end of, at the end of all the tie-ins, he's like, oh my god, like me actually interacting with the timelines and like looking at them makes them maybe not even happen. So literally, I undid all the work I did in the previous issues because right. anyone could realistically be Monarch. But also, at the same time, uh, I'm going to find out if you like this, and maybe you would like to see it in a comic book someday. Yeah, bit. maybe. Right, yeah. depending on how this you, sells, maybe this like will become this option? The, yeah. the future. Yes, no. Right? Do you want to see Superman become the bad guy? Kill call this number man? and say yes yeah. or no. Oh, yeah, and there were numbers. There were numbers you could call to, like, let your voice be heard in the comic book world. <sighs> so, okay. there's a couple of issues that matter. Which ones matter? Uh, there's an issue of Hawk and Dove. Yeah, that's near the end. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so Hawk and Dove was interesting because, like, uh, Hawk and Dove... Which person does he touch? Hawk or Dove or both? <laughs> Hawk and Dove was a... It's kind of like a reboot because Hawk and Dove was originally Hank Hall and his brother Don Hall, but Don dies in Christ and the Earths, and he's less interesting anyway, so they replace him with a girl and one that's not related to him so they can bang. <laughs> and Hawk and Dove in the reboot 
post-crisis becomes like kind of like this like lover story about cool. like how a really aggressive dude and a really passive chick make each other work. And uh, it's like you yeah, balance each other out. That's exactly. There and, you and go. Both as heroes and as people, you know, because like Hawk has like super aggression and Dove is very calming and passive, and so if like Dove <laughs> together, is, together they are they codependent. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the year 2001, like, Monarch shows up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, finally we fucking see Monarch oh, in this goddamn future. okay. Is that him? Is that Monarch? No, that's Hawk. Hawk, like, turs into a big well, bird monster Hawk. This in is the Monarch, future. Right? In, yeah. in the year 2001, uh, Hawk can also turn into a giant bird monster and fights Monarch. But then, Hawk turns into Hawk Man in the <laughs> uh, Dark Line universe. Yeah. No, Hawk Man Where he Man becomes a dragon this... and destroys the world. Yes. Oh. Now, that's what's so fucked up. So here's something weird, okay? Ready? Because there's a Hawkman book that's happening in Armageddon 2001, but he's not related to Hawk. But Hawkman's name is Carter Hall, and Hawk's name is Hank Hall. But they're not related. Ah. The two Hawk characters are both named Hall at the end. Yes. Weird. And <laughs> Scott Snyder didn't connect that in Dark Knight's Metal, but he does connect Carter Hall of the new incarnation of Dream, Daniel Hall. But not Hank Hall. If it was the grand son of Hank Hall, yeah. that would be fucked up. That'd be fucked up. Uh, but I don't know why though. In any case, Hawks and Halls. It's really weird and I don't know why. Yeah. In any event. Uh, Alliteration. Yeah. The future of, uh, of, of, of Hawk and Dove is that they have a kid named Unity. Okay. Monarch is like, wow, you're strong and could possibly kill me. Let's bang. And Unity's huh. like, gross, get away from me. And then like, yeah, gross. at the end of the book, basically, yeah. uh, the only thing that Wave Rider walks away from besides like, I'm probably not gonna be reading any Hawk and Dove comics is- Monarch well, is a pedophile. Monarch's a creep. Yeah. Uh, but no matter what, and there's actually a line in the book where he says like, because like in every possibility, you know, he like, okay, well Superman obviously doesn't put on a Monarch costume. But by the time he gets to Hawk and Dove, he's like, oh my God, anybody could be Monarch. Regardless of, Timelines or any actions, Hawk can't be Monarch because of Unity and stuff. So it's like, okay, we can take that off the table. At least we know that like Hawk and Dove are not related to Monarch. So okay, I had like 13 options. I have removed one. Bingo. All of these books. Check. I have removed one. Yes, and throughout the book, they're kind of like hinting at who might be Monarch. Like who hasn't he touched yet? Mm -hmm. Because despite the fact that like we kind of undo it at the end, we're kind of all in agreement that at least Superman and Batman ain't, ain't going to be Monarch. Okay. So, you know. But even though, like, he says, like, I've done undone all this work, I yeah. still don't know who it is, and it could be anybody. It's definitely not these people. It's definitely not these people. <laughs> until I touch someone else, and maybe it's not them either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's true. So, that's that's an issue. And it's ridiculous. This, this book... This is... Is, madness. Is, is total madness. No, the Hawk and Dove it, it changes, is like, insane. It changes, scenes and timelines, like, Three or four times. No, it is, it is a disaster, uh, and and it's so. You do get a lot of screes and scraws though you from do. the hawk monster. Yeah. So that's there's cool. even a raw. Everyone else is kind of like, oh, well, you never know. Right. All right. But so this was one of the books that was important. That what, was what, what's supposedly important. Supposedly important. Uh, Justice League. Oh. Wait. Does he Justice touch League? everyone in the Justice League? League? Not Justice League America. <laughs> Justice League Europe. So this is brought to you by Keith Giffen. So uh, because he's forced to do an Armageddon 2001 crossover. Uh, it's a big fat joke, and he's like, eat me. I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> Has he abandoned the, I have to be invisible? Oh yeah, no, that's over. Well, he, he hooks up with Superman, and Superman's like, okay, well, we, gotta, we gotta tell people. Like, we gotta blow the lid on the secret of who Monarch is. Right. And we'll just, we'll just figure this out now. So Cause, Superman- Because once you find out who it is, I'm gonna burn them. Pretty much, I mean, no, but like, yeah. So Superman and Wave Rider go to the Justice League headquarters, and then they like basically have to line up and get touched by Wave Rider. <laughs> like, let Wave Rider touch you. Okay. And Giffen's the only one who's like, that's weird and creepy. Ew. I don't like it. Uh, you know, we'll so pay five dollars. He plays with it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is that all these characters in the Justice League Europe have like a weird, crazy time story that are seemingly disparate, mm -hmm. and they end up in like different eras. He touches like Rocket Red, and he ends up during like King Arthur time, and he becomes a knight and fights Etrigan, and he touches Power Girl, and she ends up in like the Blitzkrieg in World War II, and like he touches Metamorpho, and he ends up in like a crazy, like dystopian future. So he's not seeing their futures, 
They're being sent through time? No. He's seeing their futures, but like there's a time machine downstairs and that's what like fucked everything up. Like there basically there's going to be like an explosion <laughs> and they're all going to get sent through time. So when he sees their futures, he's actually seeing like an them adventure being that, sent through. Yeah, them yeah. going on like some weirdo adventure. But yeah. like what happens is at the end, he's like, "Well, that was weird. Anyway, now I'm going to touch Captain Adam and like holy shit, what's going to happen?" And okay. There's a, there's a heavy implication that maybe Captain Adam is the monarch. Ah. And the reason why people thought so is because Captain Adam's book was canceled. Oh, so like so that's why he's going to well, become that's great. monarch. Well, like he's no longer Captain Adam. He is now the monarch. He's going to be Yeah, monarch. he's going to get so mad about his book being canceled that'll become <laughs> that he goes nuts and becomes monarch. <laughs> yeah. Then we get to Armageddon 2001 issue 2. Issue 2. Which is the finale of Armageddon. Yeah. And so Wave Rider touches Captain Adam and we go to his his future in 2001. Uh huh. And we watch as Captain Adam is like older and his he lives in a dystopian future. He lives in a seemingly more dystopian future than the one that Matt Ryder comes from. <laughs> okay. But it's seemingly the same timeline. But in any case, um, Captain Adam's family is gunned down by gangs and it turns out that like the gangs in the future are sanctioned by cops to keep them from like having gang wars. Okay. And so like there are cops that police or protect or work for different gangs. And because it's 1991 and gangs are a huge problem. They're sweeping oh, yeah. America. Yeah. There's a street and, sign back there that just said pain. Yeah. Pain? You're on pain street. Buses only. One yeah. way. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Captain Adam, his life sucks. His family's gunned down. They go to the morgue. The family doesn't go to the morgue. They were dumped at the dump. So he's got to go to the dump just hammering home, like, how shitty Captain Adam's life is. Captain <laughs> Adam, like, he promised that he wouldn't power up anymore because, like, his energy was causing, like problems okay so uh he, you know, he loses his family and he, he he's so disrespected and disgraced by all of this that he powers up and he like attacks the cop that's protecting the gang and he blows them up and he activates his powers and he just like he just goes nuts and blows up and it's like it's huge and you know his, his energy goes everywhere and he blows it's up the city really right. leading to the fact that it's captain like, holy adam shit captain monarch. adam might be monarch right and, and he's uh, like a nuclear bomb exactly yeah. yeah but he loses it and then like Wave Rider is like, whoa. And as Wave Rider is accessing Captain Adam's possible future, which we've established probably won't happen because he's already interfered, and now he's actually telling Captain Adam what his future is going to be, Monarch shows up. Oh. As the energy is being dissipated from Captain Adam, Monarch was monitoring Wave Rider the whole time, and the energy that Captain Adam disp dispelled in the alternate future he was in was still real energy that Monarch could use in the future, and so he uses it as a teleporter to send himself back in time. Throughout the, the tie-ins, Wave Rider starts to, it, 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 it's not all what ifs and rainbows. It's also Wave Rider being like, oh, I sent someone else in the time stream. Okay. Like, someone's following me. Yeah, it's the other Wave Riders. And, <laughs> yeah. No, it's Monarch monitoring Wave Rider. Okay. And then using the energy that he uses in this timeline to finally, like, break through. That suppo like, s seemingly, Monarch didn't, like, jump into the time machine or anything, but that he was able to somehow use the time machine to, like, tap into Wave Rider's time travel. Okay. It doesn't matter. To, like, Why didn't know they just put where... a hammer inside his brain like they yeah. did the cat? Well, that's a different well, company. That would have been smart. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, but they didn't. Okay, so he, he basically, I'm going to assume yeah. that he wouldn't get in the time machine himself because he didn't want to disappear like those other people. Yes, that's right. And so he's like, but Wave Rider, I know, figured it out yes. and knew how to do it because he had the willpower, whatever. Sure. And I want to go through time and follow him, but I'm yep. scared. Yes. But now I see this energy source over here, yep. and if I have that, then I don't need whatever intrinsic capability that Wave Rider had well, to survive the that process. In conjunction with Wave Rider to go through. Well, yeah, and then I tracked says, Wave like, Rider's signature or whatever to find the spot in time where he is now. Yes, because so I can Monarch stop. Monarch suggests that he like did go into the time stream, but was kind of like stuck there. But because of Captain Adam's alternate reality energy, uh, that allowed him to free himself and go into the past. Sure. But like, but like they could have just, just say, not... I use the machine. Right. Right. That's all he needed to do. But it needs to be fucking complicated. Yeah. Yep. Well, that that that's what makes Wave Rider special. Yes. He doesn't need to the use Captain machine. Adam's energy yes. to like figure out how to travel through no. time. But the Monarch does. Exactly. So Monarch's gonna blow up Wave Rider, but Flash comes in and saves Wave Rider. So then Captain oh. Adam's like, I'm gonna fight Monarch. 
And mm. Monarch blasts Captain Adam, fights Superman, and then uh, leaves. Okay. And so they're like, oh shit, what's Monarch's plan now that he's in 1991? What's he gonna do? Because Monarch wants to make sure that he is not unmade. Right, so he was, his plan was to kill Wave Rider, but we stopped him, so yeah, now what's he gonna the do? plan is stay as far away from yourself as possible. Right, the second you go happen. near anybody, you're going to give away that they're Monarch. Yes. So, here's the thing. Monarch was Captain Adam. No. Oh, okay. That's the plan. Because okay. Captain Adam's book got canceled, and Captain Adam's like powerful and complicated. Plus, like he's a template for Doctor Manhattan, and people like him, so we can make him into kind of like a shittier DC version of Doctor Manhattan. Right. But then, sometime during the process of this, people found out that Captain Adam was going to be Monarch. Mm -hmm. there, oh. are, there are a number of reasons, and actually, <laughs> it's funny because they sent me down a rabbit hole because every news source was just like it got spoiled. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but fucking how? Yeah, but how specifically though? Well, apparently in Comics Buyer's Guide, it said, basically it told retailers like, Captain Adam's gonna be Monarch, so fucking pick up your orders. Uh. And comic <laughs> retailers told people. Yeah. But also. Oh, you, you wanna, you're gonna wanna buy this. Yeah, you wanna yeah, pick this up. You're a big Captain Adam fan, you're gonna enjoy this. Yeah, right, or not. <laughs> but apparently, according to Dan Jurgens, uh, there was a 900 number that existed back in 1991 oh, no. that was just about comic book tips and info. And one of the pieces of tips and info, if you called that 900 number, was simply, Monarch is Captain Adam. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay money, you can get spoilers. Yes! <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Don't worry, in the future, you can just get spoilers yeah. for free. Yeah, people will contact you and give you spoilers for no good reason. That, that was how Captain Adam was spoiled as <laughs> the Monarch. What's great is, DC went, well, we could just have the story progress but all we have is the reveal. Right. That's, That's the, the only reason good people part are of the story. Yeah. So, yeah. so sh did the author suddenly be like, no, no, you can't spoil this. No, DC editorial went, if, this, if, if, the, if the reveal of Monarch is spoiled, then there's no point to the story. So now we're at the end. <gasps> oh my God. Sal? Yeah. Sal? Yeah, in Hawk and Dove, there's a cop that Dove is shacking up with, nicknamed Sal. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he's not a mobster or a pizzeria owner. You finally get somebody else. Yeah, and he's murdered by Monarch. And turned into oh. a pink skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You get Mars attack. Well, it's, not even it's not even his name, it's just his nickname. So anyway. So uh, they gotta make a new Monarch. Well, they gotta make Make a new guy old... Monarch, yeah. yeah. So supposedly uh, the editor of Armageddon 2001 went to the offices of Hawk and Dove and said, uh, what, what, are you, what are you planning on doing with Hawk and Dove anytime soon? Because you're the <laughs> lowest selling book that we're putting out right now. And we canceled Captain Adam. Yeah, Captain Adam's dead. And, and you're the still the lowest book. But you're the lowest book that's selling after right. Captain Adam. So Monarch goes and tracks down Dove. And he like hits her with a paralysis ray or something and kidnaps her. Meanwhile... Wave Rider explains the Justice League like how anyone could still be Monarch even if we thought it was Captain Adam. Right. So then, <laughs> because the story needs it to be so. Yeah. So Monarch goes and he tracks down Hank Hall, Hawk, and fights him. Okay. So they fight. He loses immediately. Hawkeye hits him with a paralysis ray and then goes into the woods and dumps him with Dove. So now Hawk and Dove are together and like momentarily paralyzed. Okay. Meanwhile, Monarch goes on like a little scavenger hunt, grabbing key components from big, powerful like <laughs> laboratories and power. Because he's he's got to give Hawk the ability to be Monarch, because Captain Adam inherently had Would those powers, been... but Hawk doesn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. So. Monarch puts together, but that's the thing, is you think that's what it is. Oh, Monarch no? Monarch is collecting pieces of, uh, piece of technology and chemicals and stuff to build a great big green bomb that he's oh. going to use. And this bomb will only kill organic matter nearby and leave all the cities and everything intact. Uh, it's a bomb that's that's big enough to go off and kill all the superheroes in the area. That he's going to jumpstart the Armageddon 2001 10 years ago. In 91? In 91. Oh, my goodness. Shit. So now it's happening now. Yeah, now it's now, now. Okay. So, this is his plan to like subvert Wave Rider's plan yes. to stop him in the past. Exactly. And also okay. subvert having Captain Adam. Well, be that's. Monarch. That's right. So Monarch builds the machine. You can't, you can't be Monarch in 2001 if there's a different Monarch in 91. <laughs> yeah. So 
Monarch builds the machine, and then he's like, okay, d okay, Hawk, are you watching? Because this is what makes you into Monarch, and he murders Dove in front of him. Oh. So he kills Dove, and it's like, you, you could have done, like, DC is not shy from just shoving women into refrigerators or snapping necks. Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, he uses, like, a big, stupid, complicated energy blast to, like, just eliminate her. Yeah. And it still uses, like, leaves her body broken and, and shattered. But he kills Dove in front of Hawk, right. which make, makes Hawk lose it. And sure. then Hawk goes nuts, and he attacks Monarch, and he beats the shit out of Monarch and knocks off his helmet, revealing that Monarch's face is Hank Hall, but old. And he's like, yes, this is it. It's making it happen. This is the I remember this happening. I remember you doing this. God what? Damn it. But, but so, in 2001. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Hawk kills himself. And then goes, well, the world that you the world that I live in allowed for Dove to be murdered, but I will bring order and peace to it by being Monarch. Like Monarch's plan outside of killing Dove was pretty solid. Like killing all the heroes, because if they were worth a damn, they wouldn't have let Dove die. So I'll kill all the I'll just be Monarch now. So he puts the Monarch armor on and now he's Monarch. Wow. Did he does go back in time and make himself? Yeah. He does. But Maybe I thought like that, that like, Waverider changed history by trying to stop Monarch. So then Monarch's like, oh no, I see what you're trying to so do. I'm, I'm going to go back even it. farther that's what it is, and because, stop you from changing history and make it happen like Yeah, because, early. because Monarch has to like jury rig a bomb that will kill all the heroes. Like an right. Oregon 2001 bomb. That would right. be better, so, but the bomb doesn't go off here, right? No. Well, no, it's but it's point. going to. So this is the beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. This event in 91 mm -hmm. could set... Hawk on the trail to become Monarch yeah, could right. still happen. in 2001. Could still that could still be like, their future. Okay. No! <laughs> I'm gonna be Monarch. Except it's not, because it's, because, because no, 2001 came and went 20 right. years ago. Well, yeah, I know. And it never happens. But also, they beat him. Well, I was gonna say, they, they obviously defeat in some way the Monarch at the yeah. end of this. So literally, all the heroes everywhere all descend on the epicenter where they're all gonna die what, to yeah. fight Monarch. They'll go to one place so that Monarch can kill them with a the bomb. But he also says, like, if all the heroes don't show up, then I'll, like, turn on the bomb and I'll kill, like, regular people or something. Like, you gotta, you, all the heroes ever. Well, how is it not gonna kill regular people anyway? It's well, they're gonna leave. Too. Like, they're, the, the heroes are, like, evacuating. But the people. heroes uh, assume that, like, well, we can stop the bomb. Oh, sure. Well, they're, they're, they're optimistic. Yeah. So, uh, all the heroes go in, uh, but they also tell, like, Captain Adam to go away because, like, you know, he has to show up later. Also, it. you're unstable. He is unstable. Because Captain Adam's like, oh my god, my family was killed. Like, that was an alternate timeline. You know that it's going to happen now. This is, it's not going to happen. Yeah, like, you're, no, it's, you just, just stop by virtue it. Of you can knowing, change it. It's literally, you don't even have to change it. It's just not going to happen. Like, by virtue of Wave Rider's powers, it's just, it's just that's an alternate timeline that won't happen anymore. <laughs> uh -huh. And he's like, no, but like, I felt it and I was there and so I'm sad and like, that's going to make me really upset and like, right. so maybe I will be Monarch. I don't know. Like, it's just, he's just so fucked up. Hey, hey, could there be two monarchs? <laughs> yeah, he does, and yes, there will be. But like, So it's literally just like, I saw it happen. Yeah. And just visually seeing it is traumatic, even though I know that won't happen in reality. Yes. Yeah, okay. he still had to live through uh, it. I guess yeah. that it would be traumatic for some people who can't separate what they saw from what they know is going to happen. Dreams are traumatic. Like, <laughs> yeah. you wake up from a dream and you're like, yeah. all right, that was all fake. Yeah, wow, but that's because so it though. didn't yeah. feel fake. Yeah. I guess that's the same case for this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but then after, like, a few minutes, you calm down and you're not scared of the dream anymore. But right. he's not calming down. No. Yeah, but this isn't even a dream. This is no, an, that alternate happened in reality. an alternate reality. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, right. but a dream happened in my actual reality. Yeah. So it's, like, more real than this fucking reality <laughs> that never will happen. That's right. He's also pissed because, like, because he did that in the alternate timeline, it allowed Monarch to happen now. Oh, yeah. So he's like, it's my fault! It's my fault, like, yeah. yeah. It's okay. alternate use fault. Anyway. So <laughs> Monarch shows up, Captain Adam fucks off, and then Monarch's like, hey, how come Captain Adam's not here? And they're like, we couldn't get everybody. It's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah, you, uh, who cares? He'll be here in a few minutes. And they're like, oh, that's bullshit. And uh, by the way, he set up the machine on top of Star Labs. The only reason why I mention it is because when the machine breaks, because, like, they don't kill all the heroes, spoilers, uh... <laughs> Star Labs gets broken, and then you have two fucking whole issues of Superman, where they have to re, where they, where they have to save people from the destroyed Star Labs. Mm. It's just like, fuck. <laughs> Buildings get blown up all the time in this goddamn place. Yeah, like, but he this saves one... people in three panels. Yeah, you don't need two issues. No, yeah. two whole issues of Star Labs being broken. So, uh, you know, the heroes engage Monarch. Superman punches Monarch in the face and breaks his mask and reveals that it's Hank Hall. Right. Hank Hall then looks at the reader and says, I'm Monarch. I bet you're pretty surprised by this turn of events. Wink. And you're like, eat me. 
<laughs> no. Yeah, I'm surprised because it doesn't make any fucking sense. There's, I want my dollar twenty-five back. We're calling that hotline. It was two bucks. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. There's one freaking issue where they say who isn't monarch, and it's the one book where he is monarch. Fuck you. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know who would be great would be monarch? The one we told them wouldn't. Be couldn't monarch. be. Yeah. Also, now Get that fucked. he is monarch, he wants to fuck his daughter. What? Ah! In that issue, remember? God. He, oh, damn that's it. right. He hits on Unity because he's definitely not monarch. But now he oh. is. So now he's a creep. I hate this. That's awesome. So, uh, <laughs> so he activates. We couldn't make it anybody else. We couldn't make it just a super villain. Nope. 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 No, it has to be. We well, set this whole thing we up. We said by, it like, was going to be a hero. It's going to be a hero. It's, so you get, you get it's got to be a hero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll just make it a super villain and be like, but they're not a superhero. Oh, but they might be in the future. Oh, yeah, we're changing I'm altering that up. the deal. Yeah, you could have literally it's... done like another Superman issue where he touches Lex Luthor and Lex Luthor becomes a hero at the end. Yeah, that's but, true. But, like, no. So anyway, that uh, would have been no. That would have been a cop out too. Oh, They're like, oh, so it really was just a supervillain. No, 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 he became a hero. Yeah, but I don't know him as a hero, so no. <laughs> yes. So you fucking lie. It's right. a cop out because now this guy is hitting on his own daughter. Well, yeah, yeah well, but no, that's uh, worse. Whatever. Luke kissed his sister, so yeah. Okay, yeah. it's fine. It's ninety one. They didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, but they but they made it that way anyway. Mm, yeah. They did, but they didn't know. Yeah. They knew after, and, and they this still... guy knows that's his daughter. Yeah. Maybe well, anyway. he forgot. Maybe time scrambled his brains. The Swiss cheese brain couldn't remember. That's right, yeah. I, I know I love you, and I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm assuming because you're hot, I'm just going to you know, yeah. get with you. So anyway, uh, Monarch Hawk activates the bomb. You know, there's all this, like, energy and tachyons going on. <laughs> Wait, Friggin wouldn't that kill him, too? <sighs> He's immune. Whatever. It doesn't matter, because he doesn't think about that. It's, it's 91. It's not even supposed to happen anyway. So then Captain Adam is like, wow, my quantum energies aren't affected by what's happening here, so I'm the only hero who can stop it. So then Monarch and Captain Adam fight, and as they battle, they absorb, like, the energy around them and, like, you know, suck in all of the energy that would have killed all the heroes, and instead, like, take it into themselves, and then, like, there's a little, like, mini-explosion of themselves, and they are both seemingly destroyed, and Star Labs gets broken, and so the heroes have to spring into action and save, like, the bystanders, and also, oh, yay, we didn't die. And Monarch's gone, so thank God for that. Look at how freaked out Superman is. Yeah, he's really, Well, because it's not evacuated. So, like, the heroes spring into action, Wave Rider is saved, the building collapses, they find a little boy, they're like, oh, no, a little boy's under the rubble. Who will save him? And Wave Rider helps him, and it's Matthew Ryder. Oh. The hero that Matthew Ryder can't remember saved him is himself. Is himself. Okay. That's kind of fun. At least that, like, fulfills that old prophecy of, like, it doesn't matter yeah. as long as there's somebody there to, well, to do that. And Matthew Ryder, the Wave Rider character, says the inspirational thing that Matthew Ryder will then remember. Right. Who's this guy in the red suit who looks like Superman? <laughs> That's Mon L. He's a Daxonite. He's basically like Superman. Oh. But okay. Led acts like kryptonite to him and like gives him cancer. And stuff. I see. He he's even got the mullet that Superman will have. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> testing it out. Is there like an, uh, a reverse lead or a, like a blue lead that like changes? No, they him? just have to stick him in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, uh, Monarch and Captain Adam were sent into the time of dinosaurs. What? Yep. And then aliens show up in a mini series called Armageddon Alien Attack or whatever. It's four issues. Where aliens go to the go, go to the Jurassic period and they ask them for help building a wormhole machine that allow them to like travel through interstellar. Wouldn't uh, them space. going that far back into the past like change you know, history? Change history and Probably. fuck things up. Well, that's why they, they have to leave immediately. Uh. And then they have a fight through time where they fight in like the old west and stuff. It's really dumb. Yeah, this is a really terrible time loop where yeah. like you always get your own power. Right. Yeah, I but guess. Where did it come from? Myself. Yeah. No, that can't happen. Yeah, but no, no where did you get it father. from, though? No, but who was who was John Connor's father before you went back in time? <laughs> Kyle Reese. No, <laughs> Exactly. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> here's what's really fucked up is that then in 2006, uh, Infinite Christ had like 17 tie-ins, so they're like, here's another one. Uh, and, and in that one, they make Captain Adam into Monarch. Because they like... Cause, 15 years later... Why? They, because 15 years later, the same people who worked here were still working at DC. And they were like, man, I still feel bad about, like... How we fucked about up. About how fucking up uh, Armageddon 2001. So, like, let's make it so that... So that Captain Adam becomes Monarch in another story that doesn't go back in time and become the Monarch of this story. So it's just that, technically, Captain Adam did become Monarch. Yeah. Just not in the timeline of the story that it mattered in. Nope. 
Yeah. So then there's no, there's literally no reason for it now. Yeah, that's right. Because in it doesn't even like fix what you did. Asked for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> we're, no, we're making it right. Yeah, I'm fixing it. Like, By not at all. Are you fucking kidding? In in all of my years in comics, the one regret I have <laughs> is that Captain Adam didn't become monarch. Was pussied yeah. out on making Captain Adam that's right. monarch. Yeah. Yeah, because Jesus. we were afraid of having people just be right. Yeah. Oh, it got spoiled? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guessed it. That well, at least it makes now, sense. Yeah, it is. Well, at least it makes sense and it's a satisfying story. No, we're not. We're not no, 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 no. We said there was no, going to no, be no, a no. reveal. I don't thing. negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> yeah, or 900 numbers. It's, yeah. The other thing is, you have all but admitted that the story is unsatisfying. Like, yeah. there's nothing to the story. Yeah. You know, like, no, but it's a, it's a narrative that at least crescendos with a, with a satisfying ending. Oh, no, 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 we're not in the business of making those. Mm, no. We're in the business of making gimmicks. This must have been very confusing at the time. I'm looking at the end of these, and some of them say, like, story continued and blah, and some of them don't. No. So how are you supposed to figure out what fucking order to read them in? Uh, I guess there you. is no order. <laughs> I, I, there is a reading order according to, like, third-party groups. Uh, but as like long I as said, it says Armageddon 2001 on Sapu cares. Doesn't even right, say doesn't. part. At least Bloodlines had the good sense to like break them into chapters. Yeah. There's Earth yeah. Plague and Bloodstorm. Right. Bloodstorm. So there are at least three separate chunks of time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this you can follow like, like those stupid aliens like throughout. You can, they actually like, do things and hatch schemes. This is just wave right touches you. Yeah. It's just at what point? There's the Maxima issue. Yeah. But the Justly Europe one is like, oh, he's going to touch Captain Adam. And then it immediately goes into Armageddon 2001. I see. Issue two. So that is, that is a direct link, these yes. two. Those two are direct link. And it's fun to read the Hawk and Dove issue because of what a clusterfuck it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to read that in order to realize like how screwed up <laughs> the end of the story yes. really is. Like how ruined this is. Yeah. There's so many more other forgotten or mishandled DC Comics events. Like I said, War of the Gods, the massive 50th anniversary Wonder Woman Comics event is happening at the exact same time as this, and it's also terrible. So you can see like why DC was panicking and murdering Superman. They're just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> we, we've tried all of, our, all of our bad ideas and nothing's working. I want one person to come through from editorial and just be like, you all, it's ruined. Look what you've done! We've ruined it all! It's all on fire! You know what you're gonna do next? You're gonna kill Superman. Yeah. That is your penance. Yeah, <laughs> kill him. That's it. And, and they're like, kill Superman! He's like, yes, you must suffer through this. Yeah. No, they killed him because they were just mad because they were planning on marrying you know, Lois and Superman and then the TV show's like, you can't do it before the TV show. And they're like, oh, okay. Oh, what am I supposed to do then? The kill Superman? Yes. Hey, Oh. that's a good idea. Hey, you know what you're holding in your hands? You're holding a piece of history right there, Ethan. Yeah, what is this? That is the first appearance of Australian Lex Luthor. Oh, <laughs> I saw Australian Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor the second. So what? What? What is this? This is Armageddon 1991. Yeah, it's just the aftermath. Oh, it's cleaning it's up just the mess. After, oh, this is this is after that. This yeah. is after the Star Labs explosion and yeah. all that, and and Lex Luthor clone shows up. Uh, Woof. Yeah. Hey, let's watch Batman and Superman fight. <laughs> are you gonna become Monarch? Get away! What? <laughs> Who's Monarch? Hey, are you gonna become Monarch? What? Damn it! I don't think I don't think you're gonna become monarch. No, I'm gonna do a flashbook now. Bye. <laughs> hey, are Great. you monarch? Where's monarch? <laughs> well, at least these guys aren't monarch. <laughs> oh, you're monarch? Wait a second. <laughs> oh, I am bad now? my job. <laughs> you're the worst, Wave Rider. <laughs> That's Wave Rider's voice from now on. Just, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, are, are you guys become monarch over here? No, we're not monarch, okay. man. Okay, just checking it. You sure? That's what he should do from now on. It's just, <laughs> That's that's mono, that, that's that's Wave Rider's whole deal. It's just he shows up to make sure that no one's gonna become a monarch. And you're not gonna be monarch, are you? He even asks Monarch himself, hey, you're not monarch. No. <laughs> of course not. Let me touch you. Oh, you're monarch. Oh, come on, you're monarch. Why would you say you're not monarch? You totally are. <laughs> This is, a, this is a sweet party you guys are having here. Uh, I guess I missed the invite or whatever, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm actually not here for that. I'm just here to make sure that there's no monarchs here. Like this isn't the start of the party that makes everyone just vote. Yeah, oh, who invited <laughs> Wave Rider? Literally none of them. Buzzkill. Who <laughs> fucking farted? Yeah, why, why wouldn't they collect this? I don't understand. <laughs> because they're embarrassed about <laughs> what, it. What are they, ashamed of it or something? <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool logo. <laughs> it's a cool name. What's so sucky, by the way? Monarch looks like crap, too. Like, yeah, he does. There's nothing fun or unique lame, about him. It's very like lame a, design. There you go. It's a cautionary tale, though. I think it's a it's, it's a caution about spoilers as well. Oh yeah, you yeah. The, the damaging effects of spoilers. You could change the outcome of an entire event yeah. and just ruin it. Just I mean, it was already it. a garbage event, but 
you really just took it to another level of trash by, yeah. like, fucking up the ending. Right. The ending. I love how, like, in the 900 number, it's just... Captain Adam is Mono. <laughs> That's the... There's no context. There's no heads up. It's just... You can't do that to us. Snake kill Dumbledore. That. Like, it's just... <laughs> Being an asshole, yep. screaming spoilers. Well, in the it's much. It's not as bad as that because, because you, have to, you have to call it you call and pay for and pay it. For so it's only people and it's that not want out it yet. Yeah, yeah, and it's not yeah. out. It's yet. a number that enables people to do that yes. to other people. Yes. Hey, do you want to be an asshole to your friends? Yeah. It's I only got some. Cost you a dollar ninety nine a minute <laughs> to be a piece of shit. They should. T- I hope they drag it out. Like, you call, and they're like, get ready for the great spoiler tip that will be coming your way in yeah. three minutes. <laughs> Stay on the line. Hello, citizen. This is your <laughs> intrepid reporter, Clark Kent, getting a big scoop for you. Yep, I'm just looking it up on the World Wide Web. Hang on a second. I'll, I'll get that to you in just a moment. I mean, they did the same thing with Robin. Like a couple years earlier when they killed Jason Todd and you had to call a 900 number to kill him mm. or not. <laughs> yeah, someone just spammed it. Yeah, pay us a dollar ninety nine to kill Robin. To kill an 11 year old boy. <laughs> I spent over $3,000, hooray. <laughs> As I understand it, that actually did end up that way. Like some somebody like Robo called it. Yeah. yeah. Just was like, and by the way, not by a lot. Like <laughs> it was like a hundred or two. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's it? If you want to read Armageddon 2001, you know, write DC Comics and tell them you want to see this collected. But otherwise, I think you can get every issue online. Not like for stealing. I believe you can actually read it digitally. Mm. Uh, you can, but you have, to, you have to pick and choose them. This is a great cover. That is a great cover. The, Look at that. The Batman covers are great. Yeah. Armageddon 2001 sucks. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you <laughs> next time with an all-new episode. Uh, What's another forgotten DC Comics event that you'd like to see us talk about? <laughs> other than War of the Gods. Other than War of the Gods, which we will do one day, because I have the Omnibus. That has an Omnibus. <laughs> but Armageddon 2001 and Bloodlines, still woefully underrepresented in the comic book stores. DC knows what it wants you to remember. I, I don't see why. <laughs> like, w- War yeah, of the Gods. Yeah, there's some pretty crappy events they, that have They won't omnibus. collect Amazon's attack anymore. Hard to believe. What? But yeah, I'm just telling you, man, this is fun. You can get a get a couple hundred bucks out of people for this. Yeah, that's true. Or you could spend fifteen dollars. <laughs> because it's fifteen parts <laughs> and no book here is worth more than a dollar. <laughs> Even the one where they introduced Lex Luthor the second. <laughs> Good eye. Oh, I'm an oh. evil clown of Lex Luthor. <laughs> I have the first issue of Lex Luthor the second. It, uh, it it's you know, in carbonite? No. <laughs> you can say carbonite, yeah. Yeah, it's in carbonite. It's frozen in carbonite. I'm frozen in carbonite. It's worth $10,000. I'll pay you five bucks for it. Oh, Done! That's, that's $10 less than Sucker. what it is to see.